to the ninth episode of my co-working show. My name is Anna and this show is all about co-working. So it's the show for all the people that are digital nomads, remote workers or all the people that want to become any of these. Today uh, we talk about everything that has to do with managing a group on a co-working trip. Last show was all about what to take on a co-working trip, what kind of essentials you shouldn't miss when packing for a co-working trip. And yeah, today it's going to be focusing on managing the group. Because one thing I realized while co-organizing all those co-working trips was that it's definitely a difference if you manage a group on a normal trip when you are basically on vacation. It's a big difference to having a group where you're basically co-working. Because of course, it's, it's clear. From Monday to Friday, all of you are going to work from the morning to the evening and on the weekends you're off. On, uh, while on the other hand, when you're on vacation, you have every day is a holiday, so every day is a weekend. And then of course, as a trip leader, you have different tasks or responsibilities as on a normal co-working trip. So first of all, yeah, so this is why I basically want to give you some tips on how to best organize your group and to manage the group on a co-working trip. What I think is always best is communication. I think I gave you this tip already many times. It's always good to just communicate, 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 especially about expectations. So from the beginning, what I would do in the first night when you're all together, everybody is set in their new home for the next one week, two week, three weeks, four weeks or whatever. Just sit down and maybe just talk about some, not rules because we don't want to make it like too, you know, like there are going to be rules, but just about some just small things that we should take care of. So first of all, just make sure that you're not gonna be the uh, the chef, the cleaning woman, uh, the goshi shopper, anything. It's gonna be, I always say, okay, hey guys, this is basically like a shared flat, just for a specific amount of time and the fact that we are all, uh, yeah, basically working the whole day from home. So it's not like that there's one person responsible for the kitchen or whatever, everybody's gonna help. And everyone has to once cook or to clean the kitchen, to empty the dishwasher, to swipe the floor, to do the laundry, whatever. It's just gonna be like everybody's doing something for the group. So um, one thing uh, yeah, that I always say, like just for grocery shopping, uh, maybe check with the group, okay, what do we wanna cook the next days? And then you see, okay, what do we need? And then make a list for grocery shopping. And then maybe, um, yeah, check that everybody is once going grocery shopping and it's not always the one person, yeah, doing the grocery shopping. And then, um, yeah, just in order for cooking, what you usually, I usually did was just see um, everybody, like what kind of like uh, main, like favorite dish everybody is have. Because I'm sure there's always that one dish that you cook that always is amazing, that everybody loves, that is always the one thing that you cook when friends are over or whatever. And I'm sure every one of your coworkers will have one of those special like meals. For me, for example, is I always cook my favorite zucchini little patties and then I do some salad and some zucchini soup or something. There might be somebody that is like super famous for his or her spaghetti bolognese or whatever, or for the lasagna or whatever. And this way you make sure that everyone is once cooking and it's not only always the one person cooking cooking the meals of course if you have somebody in the group that maybe loves cooking and he's fine or he she's fine with just cooking every day for everybody that's totally fine but then make sure that the people that are cleaning the kitchen after are always like um like not always the same people and um, so this is something i recommend um for cooking of course there are always dishes that always work like spaghetti with pesto or just like potatoes in the oven or a soup um, that you can warm up the next day or having like a rice and the curry. This is stuff that usually always works. Of course, you can also go to restaurants, but this might be not the most like best thing for your travel uh, budget if you do it every day. And especially in types like these, it's not sure that the restaurants are actually open. Um, yeah, this is just like one thing about the cooking. Then we already talked about the cleaning. Always make sure that everybody is once emptying the dishwasher and like just, just that people are, everybody's like similarly involved. Of course, same as for cooking. If there's somebody that is um, maybe loves to clean and that is like totally fine with always cleaning every day, okay, go for it. But if not, just make sure that the, um, yeah, the tasks are basically, um, yeah, separate, separated equally in the group. Um, and then of course, 
it's also like important like if you have people in the group because there there are those type of people that maybe um it's not like they're the first ones you know helping but just go to them and be like hey christoph could you please like help emptying the dishwasher or hey christoph could you help cutting the the carrots or the onions or whatever just make the people do something um, and then make sure that so that, that somebody feels like he or she's doing everything um and then also um, just see what kind of schedules you guys have. So in the beginning, when you sit down, just make sure that you maybe check, okay, hey guys, um, I have this super important meeting on Tuesday where I need one and a half hours of completely silence. And just make sure that everybody can get the space and the um, silence that they need. And maybe just align, okay, this is gonna be our table where we work and we can also have meetings while we're working. Then we maybe have one, a room where we always go if you need to have like a really quiet space and need to concentrate or um, the kitchen is going to be um, maybe locked for meetings at one point. We actually had um, a little meeting plan where we put like when somebody had a really important meeting because there are those meetings when you're maybe presenting some slides to the management um, board or whatever and the last thing that you want is having um, yeah people screaming in the background or whatever. So just make sure that every one of your co-workers and also of course for you as a trip leader, you make sure that everyone has his or her own space and you make sure that everybody can um, yeah, have the work environment that they actually need to be productive. Because the last thing that you want is that after your co-working trip, the person is like, okay, wow, I can't, like, this is nothing I can do because I always get distracted or it's always like too loud or whatever. So just make sure that those are things that you talk about in the beginning. There might be somebody that has calls the whole day. So you might see with him or her, okay, maybe we can get like her to work from the room or whatever. There are always options. Just make sure to talk about it in the beginning. And then um, what you can of course also do, just talk about um, what what kind of workouts you guys do. I mean, in the end, you are like basically sitting on your chairs the whole day. So maybe there's one person that always likes to go running. So maybe he or she wants to like just motivate the other people to just go for a run with them. Or maybe one of your coworkers is really into yoga and he or she wants to to give like a small yoga lesson for somebody or for the for the for the rest of the crew. And uh, maybe just see if you can guys get some like lunch routine, see if you maybe match with your lunch breaks and maybe that you um yeah you always switch in between okay one day I'm cooking lunch or hey let's just go for a lunch walk or whatever. Just see what kind of things that people usually do at home and then just try to see that you kind of like match and can make sure that yeah, everybody's just having a good experience. Um, of course, this is all stuff you don't have to do. And usually it also like just involves doing the time. But just from my learning, and I've done really a lot of co-working trips, usually everything is fine for the first week. And in the second week, things are starting to like bug each other or like things are just laying around or whatever. And just, yeah, you want to make sure that everybody's having a good time and didn't just expectations, expectations, expectations. Just talk about um, yeah, all those things that you should consider and then everything is gonna be fine. And if you wanna check, uh, know, like, know, wanna have some tips on what you can do besides working on a co-working trip, you can check out my other episode uh, that is all about different activities you can actually do on a co-working trip besides working. Um, yeah, and of course, all the other episodes might be also interesting for you if you're planning your first co-working trip and you want some tips from somebody that has done already quite a few as a trip leader, but also as a trip mate. So yeah, I hope that you guys, um, yeah, this episode was useful for you. If you like the content, please, um, yeah, thumbs up, subscribe, like, share the episode with your friends. Um, also check out the other episode, check out the other content on our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. We are always happy um, yeah, to provide you with good content and quality content. And we can't wait to see your first co-working trip online on our platform. Have an amazing day and greetings from Germany. Bye.